just going to give a very brief overview, given the time limitations, on what ITTO has been doing uh, in this field. Uh, Gerhard Brumman mentioned a few uh, of the projects, etc., and I'm not going to run through these uh, lists of projects in detail. I just want the participants in the meeting to realize that ITTO has been kind of a, a long-term player in this in this field of wood ID and maybe more laterally more more recently uh, tracking work so this table is a bit small to squeeze it onto one slide but I'm taking advantage of the fact that we are looking at our computers rather than sitting in a room with a big screen somewhere far away so hopefully you can read it uh, one of the few advantages of these remote meetings but um, yeah, ITTO started doing wood identification primarily as uh, marketing work. Uh, in the early days, the main uh, reason that we were focused on looking at how to identify wood and how to distinguish it uh, was to try to market it and compare it to more well-known species. So we did a lot of projects in the early days on how to identify lesser use species on their wood, wood characteristics, their microscopic characteristics. So this list is dealing with that. You can see a lot of work in China from the different regions uh, that was, uh, you know, and, and various other countries. So that, that was the start of our work and we had a long-term program. We developed a number of tropical timber atlases with organizations like ATIBT in Europe and uh, basically providing market information on the qualities and the characteristics of the species, including how to identify them. So that kind of laid the groundwork for us on that regard. And um, starting around, I guess, around really the end of the 1990s and going into the early 2000s, the organization began to discuss a previously taboo topic, uh, which now is one of our major work areas, which is this area of uh, what we used to call at least illegal logging and associated trade or illegal logging and undocumented trade, uh, many different euphemisms. But basically we started talking about and having a work program on dealing with the problem of illegal activities in tropical forests. And uh, this led uh, to one of our bigger program areas uh, that uh, together with Malena and CITES, we developed a program that was primarily funded by the EU over about 10 years uh, with a fair amount of money to work on implementing CITES better, which was recognized as one of the areas where uh, countries really weren't getting the job done in terms of uh, of implementing the, the legal extraction and the non-detriment findings, et cetera, for the species that were in CITES. And of course, this was a, a nice area for ITO to work on because it was a bit smaller subset of the total tropical forest. And if we can get it right for the CITES species, hopefully we can, we can extend it to others. So this CITES program operated between uh, around 2006 to 2016 under ITTO now continuing under the CITES Secretariat, which Malena will tell you about in a minute. But we again, we had many activities under that program to try to help countries to identify wood. Now, a lot of this work uh, didn't fall neatly into the category of wood identification or tracking technologies. Many of them were mixed, uh, and I think rightly so, because what we realized right away in, in, in both our general work and in the CITES program is that you, you know, the first thing you need to do is improve the management. Then you need to know that the wood is coming from the area that you improve the management in, which is the tracking. And then you need to know that the wood is what they say it is when it gets there, which is the identification. So, so basically it kind of all hangs together. Although some of them were more focused on identification per se, and some were more fo focused on tracking. So I got a couple of slides here. I mean, we, we worked, uh, you know, together with Malena and the team in CITES in many countries, uh, and a lot of that work is still being taken forward as Malena will show, but everything from setting up forensic labs uh, to 
work on specifically on DNA identification, uh, which I think is more up the line of uh, GTTN. And certainly the outputs of a lot of these projects have been fed into the GTTN database. Um, uh, again, timber ID manuals in Chinese uh, to translate things into Chinese, like Gerhard Blumen was saying, French and Spanish. But of course, China is by far the biggest importer of uh, all the tropical timber species and certainly a lot of the CITES listed ones. So that kind of thing is important. So you can look at the tables. Uh, another big one that the GTTN folks are aware of and probably most of you on the call is one down towards the bottom that we work with ETH in Zurich, which was going to look at the Dalbergia species, which were recently listed at the genus level in CITES Appendix 2. And the idea was to look at them, you know, do a wide ranging study. But in that one, again, something that has been, been discussed in the GTTN forum, we ran into a lot of problems of getting samples uh, sent over to Switzerland from the range states. And we ended up focusing on Madagascar for that reason, because we couldn't get the wood out of Central America and some of the Asian countries that we wanted to work with. So I think, again, stuff like that is something that we'll want to work with uh, the producer countries that we deal with in hopefully uh, making sure that those kind of uh, bottlenecks in in having access to readily, readily available access to wood samples and stuff, which we need for this kind of work, uh, isn't a problem. Uh, on tracking, uh, you know, Gerhard already showed some of these, so I won't spend much time, but uh, we focused on technologies from simple barcodes uh, all the way up to DNA tracing uh, of, of both uh, solid wood and, and in the case of Prunus africana, one of the species we worked on, the bark, which was, uh, uh, you know, when we started that project, we didn't even know if you could extract the usable DNA or recognizable DNA from the bark, and we managed to do it, and uh, uh, that's been an important contribution. Uh, Near-infrared spectroscopy that we worked in Brazil and is now being expanded into other countries in that region. And RFID tags, I mean, you guys know all these different kinds of technologies. Um, finally, again, I think Gerhard has uh, focused on a few of these projects. More recently, I mean, since we finished the ITTO CITES program work and uh, the funding moved over to CITES. We, there still has been a lot of interest in ITTO and funding work on, on wood ID and tracking. And we've worked with Tunin, which, which the people on the call certainly know about this project that we worked on in Africa. Gerhard mentioned it. Um, all these species in Africa we worked on aren't in CITES, but they are important in trade. And some of them, uh, you know, to be frank, need help in their management. So certainly this technology for identifying them and being able to track them uh, using DNA is an important advance. Um, we're working right now in Mozambique, a uh, difficult country, uh, not, uh, uh, not easy. There's some problems in the northern part of the country now with a kind of mini civil war going on, uh, uh, which makes, uh, because the main area we're working in is up there, it's, it's slowed it down a bit together with COVID, but uh, looking at a lot of the important species there, large log trade, large unregulated, undocumented, illegal, whatever you want to call it, log trade between Mozambique and China. Um, lots of good trade discrepancies there to look at. Um, Guatemala, a new project that just got funded in Togo uh, on uh, log tracking in Guatemala. Uh, and the uh, one in Indonesia that we implemented with the University of Adelaide, some of you probably know Andy Lowe, who works down there. And th those guys have just gotten together with Cameroon and Congo in Africa to submit follow-up work on the DNA tracking of uh, Paracopsis elata and Prunus africana, the bark uh, one that I was talking about earlier. So we might uh, work with them again on such projects. Um, yeah, that's kind of a potted overview in five minutes of what we've been doing. I hope that the takeaway is, is that ITTO has a fair amount of experience in this kind of work and that we feel that, uh, you know, taking on the GTTN portfolio is a logical extension of all the work we've been doing over the past 30 years in this field of wood ID and, 
and again more laterally uh, more laterally uh, uh, wood tracking. So thanks a lot.